Hello, we are going to do 2-4 today, biconditional statements and definitions. Our objective is to write and analyze biconditional statements. First, some vocabulary. A biconditional statement is a statement that can be written in P if and only if Q. If you want to shorten this, you could write it this way instead, P I F F. Q. Or you could also write it P double arrow Q. You'll see both ways in the book and you'll see both ways when I'm teaching it as well. What it means is that P arrow Q and Q arrow P are both true. Okay? A true biconditional statement is when, and remember from a previous lesson, this first one is your regular conditional statement, and this one is the converse. So if the conditional statement and its converse are both true, then you have a true biconditional statement. Next definition is uh, the word definition. And it is a statement that describes a math object. It can always be written as a true biconditional, and we'll do another a couple of examples next. A polygon is a figure in a plane that is formed by three or more line segments. If I were to write this as a biconditional statement, I would write a figure is a polygon If and only if, remember there's our uh, shortened way of writing if and only if, the figure is in a plane and formed by three or more line segments. That's how we would write the, this definition as a biconditional statement. The next one is triangle is a three-sided polygon. If I were to write this as a biconditional, I would say a figure is a triangle if and only if it is a three-sided polygon. So I rewrote the definition as a biconditional statement. Quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. So if I wanted to write this as a biconditional, I would say a figure is a quadrilateral if and only if it is a four-sided polygon. And there's some biconditional statements. Okay, let's take a look at doing a few more examples. I have two examples here. I have, hopefully you can read it. I have, we're not going to do exactly what they asked. We're doing something a little different. A square has a side length of 5 if and only if it has an area of 25. So my conditional statement taken from this biconditional would be if, it is a square with side length 5, then its area is 25. You'll notice that I did the first part here oops, as my hypothesis over here, and the second part as my conclusion. The converse of the statement would be this over here, but flip-flopped. So if a figure has area of 25, I should say instead a figure, I should say a square, sorry, 
Let's change that. So, because our our um, object is a square. So, if the square has area of 25, then its side lengths are five. Notice I flip flopped it because it's the converse. So um, this next one, writing a biconditional of this one here, I would write if y equals negative 5, then y squared equals 25. And this one I would write if y squared equals 25, then y equals negative 5. Now, we're going to look at the truth value of this. Is this one a true biconditional statement? In order to decide that, we need to look at its conditional and converse. Let's look at the conditional. If it's a square with a side length of 5 and its area is 25, this is a true statement. Now let's look at this one. If a square has an area of 25, then its side lengths are 5. Also true. Therefore, because both of these are true, our biconditional is also true. Let's take a look at the other one. If y equals negative 5, then y squared, which would be negative 5 squared, equals 25. True. So far, so good. Let's look at the converse. If y squared equals 25, then y has to equal negative 5. False. My counterexample would be y could instead equal positive 5. So because one of these is false, this biconditional is false. It is not true. So you're going to have to learn how to decide if a biconditional is true. And the only way to do that is by looking at both the conditional statement and the converse statement that comes out of the biconditional. Okay, that concludes our lesson for today.